For example, one of the ways in which we categorize different paleoanthropologists is whether they tend to be lumpers or splitters. What these kind of awkward terms refer to is whether or not they tend to look at variation in the fossil record as being representative of single species or single lineages with lots of variation, in which case we would call them lumpers. They lump a lot of variation together. Or whether they tend to see little bits of variation in the fossil record as indicative of different species and species divergence, in which case we might call them splitters. This distinction between lumpers and splitters in part reflects questions of macroevolution. What is the overall pattern of evolution that we see in the context of human, the human fossil record and human evolution? For example, we can imagine a fairly linear view of evolution in which we go from the origin of the hominins to a lineage of Australopithecines, which might divide into robust and gracile Australopithecines. And these might in turn give rise to our lineage, the genus Homo. And perhaps there's a few little side branches along that line, but that basically it's a linear trajectory through time. There aren't a lot of species, and at any given time period, there's maybe only one or two different lineages of humans at a time. So this is a linear pattern of evolution. Alternatively, we might take the approach of thinking that there are a lot of different lineages of humans at various points in the past. So maybe, again, we start off with this Australopithecine lineage, and it again divides into perhaps a robust and a gracile lineage, as we'll see in the subsequent weeks. But perhaps with the origin of Homo, we see actually fairly rapidly the rise of a lot of different lineages. So that at any given time period, early on in the Pleistocene, about two million years ago, we might have had three or four or even five separate lineages of humans. In this case, as we fill out these different species, our pattern gets what's sometimes referred to as bushier and bushier. In other words, the breadth of our model, our diagram, begins to broaden as we add more branches, more lineages to the human history. So one of the distinctions we make is between these kinds of macroevolutionary patterns. Is human evolution characterized by the evolution of relatively few lineages showing change over time, or the diversification of lineages, the origin of lots of new species, giving rise to a more bushy pattern? This is an issue that will come up particularly at the beginnings of lineages. So the origin of the hominids, which we'll be talking about very soon in this class, and eventually after the midterm, the origin of our genus, the genus Homo. At these beginning points, these periods of key transitions, we tend to see a lot of variation. And we tend to also struggle to figure out exactly what's the proper pattern of variation to understand a given lineage or a new species. The beginnings of species are very difficult to identify in the fossil record. And so at these patterns, in, at these time points, I should say, in particular, we struggle with issues of what's the proper model or what's the proper pattern of evolution to apply to this variation that we see. But it always boils down to this question of how do we explain patterns of variation? And our ultimate source is by understanding what patterns of variation look like in the living record. What does variation look like in humans today? What does variation look like in primates today? What does that tell us about how it might have looked like in the past? Again, one of the things I'm excited about 207X is with thousands of students in this class, we have a lot of opportunity to look at what variation looks like simply within our virtual classroom.